we have here in the control, we have the both the motor, the shivering, the sweating, the hormones, and the behavior should be the beginning, right? And we'll talk about them all. Of course, the hormone here, up till now, the only uh, adrenaline or noradrenaline or noradrenaline is the one which is approved. But the others, like thyroxine, still there is debate about their role in the elevation of temperature, especially. <clears throat> now we will go to the temperature. The range of temperature we are living in. Our body is set in a range of temperature, which is very fine that a temperature change outside in the environment of 25 degrees to 30 centigrade will do only one degree change inside our body. So it is very fine setup, and you can see this. This is the range which we live in. Of course, the patch are right. As you can see here, this is the range which we are living in here, and then the range which we can still survive, the range which will have the fever and the problems which cause fevers until the heat stroke, and then above 45 degrees centigrade, which is 115 Fahrenheit, will be survival is difficult. Below this, we'll go until 28, where we cannot practice well, and until 25, which we completely cannot practice, below 25 we have to die. This is the range of the temperature we are in. Now, the regulation of the temperature inside the body. First, we have to regulate the heat, because the human being, in actual fact, as some scientists have said, is a tropical animal. A tropical animal, that means designed to live in the tropics, because they can accustom themselves acclimatize themselves for the cold. Now, to keep the temperature, which we call it set temperature, I will talk about it later also, which is 37 to 37.1 average normal temperature, we have, we have the heat produced in our body by the muscle. The heat produced by our body, number one, by basal metabolic rates, Number two, by action of the muscles, either in the exercise or working or shivering. Number three, by stimulation of the epinephrine and norepinephrine, which is always because we are always under stress. And by increase of the amount of thyroxine to increase the basal metabolic rate. And by all of them affecting the function of the cell because the cell when in high temperature will function and metabolize more. And the other metabolism, you know, it comes from the substrate which we eat. And I said that in different lectures here that by eating carbohydrates or fat and very rarely sometimes protein, we are producing heat. This heat which is the street will go out and the body it will be stored. 25% of the heat dissipated in the body will be stored in the form of the ATPs, which is the currency for the heat. And when the muscle work, and the, when the muscle start to work, this heat will go outside, will be carried by the blood inside the body, this will form the core temperature. This is what we should really always take care of. The core temperature, as you all know, uh, recorded normally, clinically, from the mouth, and more accurately, or half degree extra, from the anal canal, or half degree less from the axillary, or the most accurate is to be near the tympanic membrane or in the esophagus, which rarely we do it except in research. This heat, if we keep it, we are producing half a degree centigrade every five minutes we work. Imagine that means we are in our time, we are about 12 degrees. On this, we will be reaching 39 in our time. If we don't dissipate it, it will kill us. So we have to dissipate. Dissipation 
will go by number one, radiation. Radiation is actually heat wave. It is the infrared waves. Infrared waves can radiate from everything, from the world like us, from anything available can radiate. If the wall is warmer than us, we'll get the heat from the wall. If we are warmer than the heat, we are radiating the heat. So we have two ways in the radiation. Right? And we lose by this if the temperature is nice in the room, 60% by radiation. Then we lose by we lose by two types of conductions. One conduction, which is minimal, we have to touch objects. Either bodies or objects or anything else, to lose them by conduction. The other type of conduction, which is called convection, now it is called, it is called convection conduction, which is we, have, we are having the hot air layer around our body, skin. This hot air layer is light and will become up above the body about an inch. So if we breathe it with the wind, this wind will carry this hot air to replace it by a new one, which is colder, and so on. And this is the way we have the convection which will take our blood. Now these are occurring normally with something else with them all the time which is also minimal called the insensible perspiration which is the invisible. This is a must for everybody. It is about 600 milli per day uh, from the lung and from the skin and it is not much important in losing it but it is compulsory. Now if we do exercise or the temperature will be higher than the set temperature in the hypothalamus, we have to have another mechanism to do something. The most important and useful mechanism, number one, is sweating. The sweating is the one and the best mechanism that we can really get rid of heat from our body. And we have to take care of it, and especially when we are advising people doing exercise, especially in our country. Number one, if they are foreigners, not from our country or from Europeans, they have to acclimatize. And we'll talk about acclimatization. And number two, they have to be careful to expose as much of their body. And during running, it is advisable, number one, to wear the shortest possible shorts. Number two, to wear the vest which is open from everywhere, and it's advisable to wear the mesh vest. And this is very important, because you can see people sometimes, I gave lectures sometimes in different clubs, and yesterday, by God, I find, I find different coaches, they don't understand the physiology of running, and which is very difficult. If you have somebody running in our weather, and by the way, the, the, one of the marathons, Boston Marathon, which always conducted in April, they have injuries more than any type of marathons. Although April in Boston is a cold weather, like more than our winter, because of the heat. And the people who run in the street wearing their train suit or the training suits, on them during the summer, they are committing suicides. If they run, because the human being have always a feeling, a temptation to challenge and to compete. And the first challenge to do is to himself. And this is important to know that they should run and train completely if they can without except the short. This is the way we dissipate heat. Of course, the supporting for the heat dissipation is that we dilate our vessels. And the vessel dilatation, and the, and the skin, the arrangement of the vessel, the connection between the veins and the arterial system is a unique connection. The, there is a plexus of vein which the arteries directly enter into them. And these plexus and veins, they are directly under the skin, and these are the vessels which dilate and dissipate heat when we have extra heat inside. What about the presets? The set in the our brain a set which have a point called set point, which is the one between 37 and 37.1. Above this the body will not allow any heat. And this set and the hypothalamus center is affected mainly by the hot blood which comes to the brain. The blood which comes to the brain, which is the core temperature blood, can affect the hypothalamus 
25 times more than the skin receptors. But the skin receptors have something to do with us. Let's take an example in the skin receptors. As you can see, if we have the set point here on the 37.1, for example, right? And the temperature outside will reach 31, we will start sweating to come over this temperature changes. But if we have the temperature outside on our skin, 39 degrees centigrade, our set point will be shifted into 36.5. And the reverse will happen. The temperature will go down outside. Our set point will be shifted higher. So the more the temperature outside lower, the set point will be set higher. And the more the temperature outside is higher, the set point for sweating will be lower. So this is not a fixed point, and it is shifting point. Let's do the reverse. If we have the reverse, which is that we want in a cold temperature, we want to shiver and shivering. If we have the set point in this area, for a degree of 20 degrees centigrade, we will shiver in that area which is 37 point something one. But if we have a temperature around 31, because it's called shivering, is to, to produce heat. We will shiver in lower temperature. The same, the reverse goes here. This is the set point. Why important the set point, Jiva? The set point is important when I talk later about, which is the most important thing I'm going to talk in my lecture, about fever, especially in children or even in other, we have to remember that in fever or even heat stroke, in dehydration, and byproducts, the set points usually shift in a three important condition. In dehydration, in pyrogens, and in byproducts of tumors or other substance in the body. Now, suppose we have an infection and the pyrogen of the infection which we'll talk about also a bit later and the pyrogen of the infection have shifted our set point into this area so we had set our thermostat in this area right this is very fast in actual fact when we get the infection but for the temperature to develop in the body it takes some time one to two days Rarely the temperature after infection can be that after hours. And now the temperature must, because the set up is here high, the temperature in the body must reach that set point to feel comfortable. An actual fact that during the child or ourselves, during doing this temperature, we may be not comfortable. But once we reach this and the set point is the same, we will be comfortable and sometimes you think the child has already cured. That's not. The temperature is there and the pyrogen is there until we come to an area that the effect of the pyrogen to raise the set point have been removed so we end by something which all you know called the crisis and the drop of the temperature will go down and this is what every physician wait for the crisis is something telling you that the effect of the pyrogen on the brain is have been off Now we talk, before I go, later to the fever will define it, now we'll talk about the effect of heat on us. The effect of heat, the heat will have the following effects. If we are producing heat, and for reasons or many reasons we cannot dissipate it. That means we cannot produce good sweating, or even we can produce sweating, but the amount of water not enough to produce sweating. And this is the major problem which we have during running or exercise, especially in hot country. Maybe you can sweat, but there is no water. Like the radiator of the car. You cannot cool the car, so it's going to be hot. You will see the thermometer going up. So one of the things will start something called heat edema. 
This usually happens in long distance running. Number two, heat blisters. These are all just happened to everybody. Now we come to the heat cramps. Heat cramps usually happen in this area, but mainly it is due to loss or reduction of sodium. This is not an invitation to give sodium salts to anybody who have cramps. Because, because if you are really taking care of an athlete, of somebody who exercise, of somebody walking a distance have cramps, I think if you increase the amount of salt in his foot, if the cramps is not really within two days, this will be enough for him. And he has to train carefully and start again the training. We come to the heat exhaustion after this. Heat exhaustion, there will be different picture now. There will be both types. There will be dehydration and salt loss. But the effect of dehydration is more than the effect of salt loss. That's why people who run marathons or run, or run long distance running, they must be careful to let the people or the exercise or the trainers to go and drink during the run. The American College of Sport Medicine recommend that in a marathon or on any long distance more than five miles, there should be every four to five miles a station for drinking water and will be preferable if there is a shower to take with it. Because this will lead to help that they will, they will not, of course, not to drink water until the whole, the full of the abdomen. And there is some advertising companies, advertising types of glucose or salt, salt waters or solution, these are all rubbish and fallacy. The salt, the, the salt and glucose solution are good culture for bacteria. It's a fact. The water is the best. Of course, this one, we train them, place them in the shade, cool and a cool area. If they are, you feel hot, and take the rectal temperature, of course, the important in this, they are hot, you better put cold water packs on them. First aid. Usually these people, if they rest for a while, and you take care of them, the exhaustion will be taken within 12 hours. Now we come to the heat stroke, which is the most important. Heat stroke now, the temperature above 43, and if it reaches 105, you are in the critical area, which is 25 degrees centigrade. Below this, death will occur. And you will see that here in this area, people start to get fatigue, disarticulation, they may fall sometimes. If you are running a marathon or a course of running, of course you will be responsible about it in the school, you better watch the students when they reach the situation, stop them. Because they will end in this. That means there is something wrong in their mechanism of dissipating heat. And we don't let them to go into this. When you come to this, it's an emergency. Also in the emergency, don't put ice immediately. You better put normal cold water on them. Give them fluids. The fluid will be in the form of saline. And if they, you can bring them, you can drink. Otherwise, you will take them to the hospital. And in the hospital, start to take them to the cold things. But first, you have to be sure that you are to restate them in the beginning, the CPR. Don't put them in the ice tub without first doing the CPR for them. Because the ice tub will hinder you and may confuse yours. So better in the hospital to be done, the cooling system will be done in the hospital after taking care of the respiratory and cardiovascular system. These are the main points for the heat stroke and the heat exhaustion. Of course, you know that legal picture that the skin will be dry and everything is not sweating. We'll go check. Now, since we are in the heat, we'll talk about fever. And mainly I'll talk about fever in children. Fever is increase in temperature over over the average. And as I say, it can be caused by pyrogen or by product substance from a tumor or whatever else, or dehydration. The pyrogen, there is still debate between physiologists how the pyrogen acts. 
something that it acts directly on the hypothalamus and some which is majority of them think that the pyrogen like the toxins or the protein product of the bacteria or, or the polysaccharides of the bacteria or the ripopolysaccharides of the bacteria they will go inside the body and will react with the reticular anterior system cells or the lymphocytes or monocytes to produce secondary or endogenous pyrogen. This endogenous pyrogen will work on the hypothalamus heat receptors area. We have two receptors in the hypothalamus, the shivering area and the heat receptors area. In the and they are both in different areas of the hypothalamus. They will work on them and then will produce a set point for the fever. They will shift the set point. That's why I show you in that diagram. The set point will sit here and you have now to keep with it so you have to raise your temperature. So in actual fact, fever or rising temperature in case of infection, which is now accepted clinically and majority of studies have confirmed it, that the majority of high temperature, not all of them, majority of high temperature in children are caused by viruses, which you can do anything about. And that the temperature is number one, physiologically because we have to reach our set point, and number two, there are defense in our body to kill whatever coming from outside. So we have to reassure the mothers, and even ourselves, even our doctors, we do this, we do the same, we are rushing, and we call our friends, to reassure ourselves that this is a normal temperature, that we have to, and there is no infection from the studies, this is a very good study, and I will give it to Rothman, the study from where I get it, this is a very good study, published a supplement of pediatric recently in 1984 about all the symptoms in children. Fever, cough, diarrhea, vomiting. How to approach them on scientific new approach and how to treat them modernly. I bring the, the literature about this very good article and I wish every doctor read it. And of course these people from Denver, they have published this article about fever McCarthy is the leader man who have really studied majority of the admissions or majority of complaints either from his studies or from the literature. He found really this is funding too that 20% of children who are brought, these are the wise women, the worried ladies, to bring them to emergency, they have 18% of them above 40 degrees. And it's known now that any infection for the, for the three days will cause temperature between 38 and a half till 40 and 41 sometimes. The temperature what they are warning about is 41.1 because you have to, to measure it. Let's see. Of course why they are really trying now to educate mothers for this because the fever phobia is a real exhaustion to the parents, to the child because every time we have to get it up to the leg because we take extra temperature to be sure and now majority of mothers they know it and rectal temperature has its pitfalls because rectal temperature, they, they have procedures for it. And I am sure majority of the mothers are not trained well to do it. The, rec, the rectum, the air and area must be lubricated. The thermometer must be lubricated. The thermometer must not go more than each inside. And there is incidence of perforation of rectum and breakage of the thermometer inside. And this is also one of the worries. Of course, sponging. I don't know what we'll talk about it now or later. Let's talk about it now. About sponging. Sponging, when we have usually the majority of the people, including us, we sponge in a way against the surgeon. Because when we have a feverish child, we advise the mothers to put ice or ice packs. Marufa al hamra. Let's say why we are wrong, especially in normal fever without fits. I'm talking now. Without fits, without suicides. As you, as you know that in the fever, we have the sit point high. But in the sit point high, we said that our body will try by the hypothalamus action to reach that. That means the central function or the central regulatory function is not impaired still it will respond to us. That's why, that's why if you will see that during 
during the course of the disease, you will get chills. The chills is an actual fact sort of shivering. To reach that temperature. And once you reach that temperature steady, no chills. But if you put cold outside, the brain will know there is something cold. As we said about temperature outside will affect the setup. So the, ra the brain will ask the muscle to do shivering. Either a little shivering or not, but it will produce heat. So this will not reduce heat. Sponging should be, if you are going to rubescue it, number one, should be used by normal water temperature. If you are really thinking, put a little ice and make it cold. And this don't. If you want more for child to relieve his temperature, Put it down, not completely relieved from it because you will not accept it in the condition. It's a good thing to do to keep light clothes on him. Put him in a comfortable position, Well, have to reduce his activity. If you want to be sure, this is called sponging or sometimes sponging and electric fan will help in evaporation. Of course, in our hand as doctors, the antibiotics, the antibiotics is good in our hand. But very important also to advise the mothers, if you are going to spawn the child, you better spawn the child after using antibiotics. Because the function of antibiotics is to reduce the set point. تضحك على البرين انتبايتس. نزل الست بوينت بدل ما تكون عالية هتنزلها. At least from 40 to 38. If you do the sponging, the antibody will not help you. So it's better advice now to do, to give antibody at least half an hour to one hour before sponging. And then you can do the sponging with it. Of course, on the other things, uh, uh, the definition of fever we have already, طبعا, the temperature taking Rectal, the auxiliary temperature of the children is the best way to take temperature. We know the difference. Why we are bothering children by putting in the rectum? There's no need. Even in the mouth temperature. We used to have the temperature under the tongue. It's now proved if you put the thermometer for two minutes anywhere in the mouth, will give you temperature. Put it between the cheeks. So I would advise from here that mothers will be advised by us not to use the rectal temperature. Except now leave it to the doctor or the hospital because this is a monitoring, a good monitoring for somebody who passed 41 degrees in the Right? طبعا قلنا الكوز اوف فيفرز. المهم ان احنا يعني في ذي كلام كثير عليها وندخل في قضية ال قلنا البنفيت اوف فيفر قلنا تكلمنا عن of course, scientific basis for why I said about the taking temperature. And you know these things. Shivering means temperature is rising. Flushing means fever has peaked, has reached the peak. Sweating, يفرح كل الناس لأنه هو فعلا كنا إحنا بنغطي الناس عشان. At uh, at antibiotics. Some word about the antibiotics. There is of course many types, but the most accepted and used type now, there are two groups. The aspirin group or acetaminophen group, which is, you know, the more, it's actually paracetamol group. The Tylenol, the Tempa, which is famous, and the Panadol serum. And this is the way, and children below two to three years old, we better take care of the weight and by weight we give them all by the droppers. One thing of the paracetamol have over the aspirin is that the paracetamol can be in the syrup form. Although it is, as they said, expensive. Also there is an advice now 
which is accepted by majority to some extent, although I am not in favor of this myself, I think aspirin, the advantage of aspirin are really far more advantage have than its disadvantages. But it is, has been recently associated with race syndrome or disease, and it's advised now by many authorities not to use aspirin in case of influenza attacks and chickenpox. In actual fact, the number of race diseases or syndrome have been discovered in America doesn't work this really panic alone. But since we have another one, we can do the same and we can use. This is the way about anti antibiotics should be a first choice to us and for the mother to use. Because now there is a trend in many of the schools for the area or temperature is to wait not to give and to rush to give antibiotics. Since we are going to wait, we have to give the mother something to pay. And that, and these ones are the ones which will, we can depend on. Them. And we'll give you later a jadwal adam and the muqala dr. Rahman, inshallah, we can find it, which is very good. Yani, hariqa mahsub hisabat, very good. Now, we go to the call. Last time I did, question call. Of course, the advances in the cold and the heat, there is some advances in the treatment and diagnosis of cancers. It's established and have benefits. Now we come about the cold. In the cold, the advances in science have started with operating under hypothermia which is not much used now with the advances of anesthesia. But they are using them now, number one, for preservation of the blood and blood products. By freezing, you can keep blood, red blood corpuscles indefinitely. And this has been used recently in doping. And you have heard about in the Olympic Games, if you take a pint of blood from a player and put it in the freezer, not in the fridge, in the freezer, not cooling, freezing. For three weeks, you can get the same after thawing and inject them into the player. The player, instead of playing with five million RBCs, he will play with more than this. And his hemoglobin instead of 14 will be 17. And this is, have been considered doping by the Olympic Committee. And it's not used, I don't know why it's doping, it's normal because somebody is getting his own blood. Um, performance sure will be good. More recently also, and there is ethical debate about this, the freezing have been used for freezing ovums, fertilized ovums, freezing cloned fetuses. They are making nuskhat al and they keep them in the freezer. Freezing organs for sale, and they are advocating that by 1990, there will be organs for sale on the shelves, freezing human beings. And they already done it in America. There is a center in America called Center for Cryonics. They freeze people with $20,000. And you can even pay for your insurance company and insure you for freezing. And one of the people freeze famous Walt Disney, Mujammed. They put them in the YouTube prison. They have them with Sanadir, we don't have them computerized. And we don't know the future of freezing for such things, but it is the work done in the advance of science. How far it will work? How ethical we have to stand in front of it? How will we accept it? Are we going to, are going to be offered a new organ or refused or accepted? We don't know. We are human beings. Now, we go now to the work of the hypothermia. In the hypothermia, now we have the, the, the reverse, the shivering center. The hypothalamus have a shivering center and the dorsomedial part of the posterior hypothalamus. This shivering center always dormant because the heat center is working all the time. As I said, we are tropical animals. But when there is cold, 
this one will not be stopped, will work. And number thing work is to increase shivering. Number two will lead to valuable constriction of the vessels. Number three will stimulate through sympathetic system and stimulation of the, of the medulla to produce not epinephrine and epinephrine and will increase the production of the thyroxine. This will lead to increased metabolism and increase the, increase the heat production. By the way, since I talk about shivering, shivering, in actual fact, it is asynchronous muscle contraction. Why is it? When the brain stimulates the muscle, it increases the tone inside the muscle without contraction. The tone inside the muscles will keep increasing under the pressure of the stimuli of the brain to reach a critical area which will lead to sudden contraction of all of the muscle in the body. In actual fact, in our normal way, when we move, when I do like this with my hand, I'm extending my arm. The extensor is working, but the antagonist, which is the are relaxing. This is the only function in the body which all the muscle is working. That's why if you want to produce heat, and you advise others to produce heat, you must be silent. No other work, reduce your size and do the shivering. And this is the difference between the shivering and the muscle work. Now, these are the... Uh, this way we are really going to produce heat inside the body. And the person can stand heat. Very important about heat. That in the course, as I said, there is no proof that acclimatization can occur. Although some of the Red Indians tribes have been found that they have high basal metabolic rates, same as the Aborigines and Australians. But there is no physiological explanation for this. The Eskimos which live in huts made of snow, they are clever. They have been able to raise their basal metabolic rate by building their huts from the snow, but the entrance is far distance, about 100 yards away. A tunnel under the ground to reach it. And in the tunnel, they put their animals. And the reason it comes, the heat of the animal will be gone inside. And by this, they have been able to live in that area with a comfortable, something called comfortable temperature. I will talk about it later. Otherwise, there is a proof that there is local acclimatization. For some people, by this local acclimatization, actual, in actual fact, it is a reflex protective mechanism. If you put your hand in the cold water or ice, the vasoconstriction will stop the blood coming. The more you are, the accumulation of the metabolites will lead to the pain which you feel. Also, but if it continues, without removing your hand, you will end by reflex vasodilatation. And this is the only local adaptation happens to people who work in the north areas, especially catching fishes or working with cold water during the winter, they have their local, their local uh, reflex working and adaptation. Otherwise, there is no cold. So we have to be careful and wear things to protect us. And if we wear anything in the cold weather, and this especially when we go outside, we have to be careful that if we go outside in a rainy cold weather to wear a waterproof cover. Because if you get wet, the water is a conductor to heat and cold. In the water, you can get conduction of heat to your body or get it out of your body 25 times faster than the air. That's why people 
who jump into the sea during a disaster in a ship or in a plane or they do it themselves, they die immediately due to fibrillation or arrhythmias. In actual fact, their death is due to this, is not due to drowning. And this is because the water is a very good conductor for cold and heat. That's why people who work in the North Pole or South Pole area, they have two things in their clothes, outside waterproof and inside plated. And they find that the best and the easiest one, because also if you wear these things and you sweat in a freezing weather, the layer of the sweat, which is not evaporated, will be frozen and make you cold and can lead to hypothermia in somebody who is handicapped or old ages or children or infants. That's why they're plated with gold from inside. And these are, that's why people in Europe and America in the cold areas, they have something called CLO, C-L-O, which is an index of a protection of a cloth. In England, they call it trog now. But clue is an international name, it's L-O. And these are the clue for everything we are wearing. Uh, shoes with sock, an index packer protection, so and so. Mushayat al Jadwal, Kulu Mujud, inshallah, and Batak Mia, the body too. The Jadwal Ashan Tarafu. You must have a lot of Somebody asks you if I go, what is protection is giving me? Now, now we come to something called comfort. We all, there is no clinical way or equipment to judge how we are comfort, either here sitting or in other room. But experimentally, they use people in different temperature to use them comfort. And I will tell you this curious thing, that until 1960s, the comfortable temperature in a lounge in England was considered 18 degrees centigrade. But because, because the energy was very high cost, they have to reduce it. They have after this to increase and then to reduce it. Now, the temperature in Qatar, if you remember some of you 10 years ago, their condition when it was on 80, which is the accepted international figure for comfortable temperature inside the rooms, this is the international ashray, the snow, the, 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 the conditioning and cooling uh, society of engineering in America have accepted this. We were accepting this 10 years ago and we were comfortable. But now there is nobody sitting 80 without complaining. What Therna, we are all putting our air condition on 70. 70 degree, in actual fact, is very low. But this is now the changing. The WHO have recommended that houses for comfortable should be should be heated two centigrade uh, centigrade higher from for the people and uh, WHO by 18 to 24 degrees centigrade. 18 to 24 degrees centigrade is between 72 and 80. But in Saraha we cannot live now by Matawadna and Rud with energy and then a Malhashima or Taka Balash, so we have to go. Well, this is a problem. I don't know our, our hypothalamus in this area have been sitting another point, maybe. Other can we have? And the baby is very important. Jadwal, and we have, we have to be careful when they are in the incubator, what temperature we should give them. And this should be in your offices in the future to advise people. Now we'll talk about the types. Uh, the types of hypothermia. Hypothermia can be a primary one, which is rarely. These are because of dysfunction of the brain, and these people usually rarely they live. Secondary hypothermia is the main cause, and you see the list. The most important cause, hypothermia, is lowering metabolism and endocrine problem. Immobility caused by coma, chronic diseases, arthritis, paralysis, all these poor, poor circulation and nervous diseases all and many drugs. And the drugs, I will stand on the drugs for a while 
The drugs, number one, which cause hypothermia, is the anesthetic drugs. Number two, in our use, it used to be, I don't know whether it's still using it or not, Largectil is a hypothermic drug, especially by injection. It used to be used in the lithic mixture. Number three, alcohol is a hypothermic. Hypnotics, because they are an actor, is hypothermic drugs. That's why it is advisable when you give hypnotics to patients to insist that they are not drinking alcohol, especially if they, because they do synergistics to each, to each other and this will be. This is what I would want to emphasize on the effect on the drugs, drugs and hypothermia. Uh, there's nothing else I want to add, except you want to ask us to work then the other types of hypothermia, the accidental one, is most familiar. One, and this is a list of accidental hypothermia by males, and you can see alcoholic stupor, psychiatric episode, drug abuse, children, victims of assault, attempted suicide, violent aircraft accidents, all these are the list of the causes of the accidental hypothermia. Therapeutic hypothermia, we used to use it for open heart surgery, but now rarely is used, except in some areas in developing countries. And it was really helpful ones, and they used for them different degrees. Now we have that we have that hypothermia, which happens accidentally according to the severity. We have to know about them, although they already happen in our country, but in case to complete the lecture, we have to come to Muhammad. We have divided the hypothermia into the following. The mild one, which is the degree 35. The 35 is called the deep body temperature. The 35. We have to be careful when we reach under this. I said this before to 28 and then to 26, to 26. To 34, this will get that. And you do what you happen. And the elderly. Moderate hypothermia, 34 to 20. This will increase. There still be shivering will go down. The, the pallor will increase. And the pulse rate will be decreased. And the breathe shallow, 10 per minutes maybe sometime. And the conscious still lost. And then there will be a rapid fall in temperature. If we go to the severe, we allow the patient which happens, especially in accidental hypothermia, this will go below, below 30 degrees, and you will have all these marks, and we have to be careful that the pulse will be absent, and the temperature of the rectal will be 28, then if it goes below 25, the death will be happening without citation. Uh, by, by this, just uh, I brought the emphasis on the children, and uh, I will send an article about the man in the future, and I hope I have uh, covered the very difficult and very wide subject of heat control and regulation in the world. Thank you.